Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a little behind the scenes look at my analytics. Now, if you're a YouTuber like myself, I'm sure you absolutely love just binge watching everyone's analytics videos and seeing how much money they make. But in all honesty, a lot of us don't really get to experience the growth and the expectations that the larger creators give us. I've been on YouTube for three years now. This is my third year. And I thought it would be interesting to see what it looks like from a perspective of someone that hasn't blown up yet. So let's go ahead and have a look at my analytics. So I started my YouTube channel a long, long time ago. I made my account 16th of September, 2012. So I've had this for a while, but I didn't start my YouTube journey until November 4th, 2021. And it took until November 9th, 2023 for me to hit my 1000 subscriber goal. Even though I hit my 1000 subscriber goal, unfortunately I didn't have the amount of watch hours. So even though I am in the YouTube partner program, I I do not make any money, not from AdSense at least. And I think this is like the frustrating thing that I really wanted to talk about from my own experience because when I blew up, I had one of my videos, I'll show it to you actually. Um, it got 22,000 views, which was, it's the biggest on my channel. So for me, that's a blow up. This obviously gave me a lot of views like overnight. It even gave me like, I think it was 300 subscribers, but you have to get all your watch time hours within 365 days, so a year. And of course that timed out and I lost all of those watch hours. So I got to about 3000 watch hours. I was, I was getting pretty close towards the end, but then obviously it timed out and I lost it all. So then I went all the way back just recently to about 1000 watch hours. So I've been slowly trying to build back up again. And I think that is the case for a lot of people. They either just don't have the right amount of subscribers or they don't get that 4,000 watch hours within that time period. So they have to consistently work at it. So you can see in the last 365 days, I got 63,291 views. And you can definitely see from the beginning to where I am now, I'm definitely getting a lot more subscribers. And even with my views, like, Obviously I'm peaking a lot more frequently and you can see that I'm actually getting more views. But in terms of watch hours, you know, it's about the same as the views. So we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> so this was the video that blew up my channel. Uh, it was called Shocking Interior Design Trends and for 2023, I think it was. And so that got 22,000 views, 361 subs and 1.5 watch hours, which was quite a lot, especially for one video for me. And it like went up and then stopped, which is fine. That was like fantastic for me. And it was above average for a lot of things. Like it had four minute view duration and 41% average view, which is great. Um, but I haven't had anything since then, <laughs> which it, it is typical. Like, you know, I know on my sister's channel, you know, she had like one that went off and then everything else has been pretty abysmal. My most recent videos that have done well. So in the last year, there's two in particular. So what's in my design portfolio has been consistently getting me views. So I've got 5,425 views on it currently. And as you can see, it's been like a very steady climb up and it got me 50 subscribers and 280 watch hours, which ain't too bad for this channel. And obviously you can see people jumped around 23% average view duration. People are obviously just having a sus and looking at what my portfolio had and whether or not it was useful to them. So I was really happy with this video and it still consistently gets me like maybe 50 views every 48 hours. So 25 views per day. And my more recent video that has been doing really well as well is the cheap way to do van life in Australia. If you haven't been on this channel before, I do a lot of van life content. I'm currently stuck here because my van broke down, but that's a completely different story. And as you can see, again, you know, it plateaued a little, but then it's slowly gone back up. And so now it's hit the 6.3K. And this particular video seems to usually get me about 100-ish views per 48 hours. So about a... 50 views per day, which for me is fantastic. So my top videos for the last 365 days was the cheap way to do van life, as I mentioned, uh, what's in my design portfolio, again, the unwritten rules of stealth camping, which got to 2.6, and then van life is glorifying homelessness, which is just on 2.5, which is really good for me. 
The cheapest van tour in Australia ever got 2.1 and Australian winter morning routine got 2.1 as well. So I've gotten, I've, I've reached past a thousand views for more of my recent videos, but I've got a lot of videos on my channel. I don't actually know how many videos I've got. I've, I've hidden a couple of them now because some of them are just embarrassing. When we're talking about blowing up on YouTube, for a lot of people, it takes two or three years to even get to the 1,000 subscriber mark. And I think I saw a study recently that said that most people don't even get to the 10,000 subscriber goal. I think it's like 2% of all channels get to 10,000. So that is my newest goal now. But, well, actually, no, it's not. It's still to get monetized. <laughs> I, can, I can receive um, super thanks. That is one thing that I can receive. But in terms of actually getting ad AdSense, I don't get anything yet. I still need my 4,000 watch hours, which I'll show you. So at the moment, yeah. So I've got my 1.252 subscribers. So I've definitely got that. And then my public watch hours, I'm at 1.737. So I'm almost halfway again, but I will admit it was really disheartening seeing it go from like 3.7 or something all the way back down to 1,000. It was just uh, like, I get it, but it's it, it was frustrating at the time. So when I first started YouTube, I started out because I just finished design school and I became an interior designer and I really wanted to help people with colors and, you know, especially if someone couldn't afford an interior designer, I wanted to use my platform as a way for people to at least get some help. And so I started off with one tip that will save you money when painting, which is now privated because it was a really bad video, but you know, it got me 40 views. So we did okay, all things considered. But if you go at the very end of my videos, my public one that you can see is five unique whites and neutrals for your home. So obviously this is built up over time, but it's gotten to 528 views. So obviously it started out with zero, we got to 20 and slowly over the time, over 810 days, it's now at 528. And I did a lot of videos very similar to this where it was talking a lot about either design portfolios, colors to paint your house, lots of whites, anything to do with interior design school I did as well. So I did portfolio reveals as we obviously saw. And I did all these like very small little things that would help people. But the thing is, it wasn't very searchable. So I was getting 30 views as an average. <laughs> and eventually I expanded from there. I did a bedroom makeover, which got 227, which I was pretty happy with. But I started seeing some growth with Architectural Digest review videos. So I would review houses and that was where I started seeing a bit more growth. So the very first one I did, which was Troy Sivan's one, I got 380 views, which, oh my God, I pretty much blew up at that point. <laughs> no. I discussed interior design for a while. Up until April 18th of 2023, I was pretty much solely discussing interior design. But on April 18th, I posted the first days of van life. And this is the first time that I talked about something different on my channel. This is where I started talking about van life and my experiences with it. And that got 411 views. So I did actually get a little bit more than typical in terms of views. And it's slowly just built up from there. Since then, I do a lot more van life content and the van life content, I think because it's also very specific, I felt like interior design was probably too broad of a banner. That was why I wasn't getting very many views. And also my thumbnails were horrible, but that's another topic for another day. But my van life stuff really did take off in comparison. So you know, 327 views in comparison to like 100 views. But yeah, ever since that content change and where I started talking about van life, that was where I started to see quite a bit more growth. I still talked about interior design and, you know, I still occasionally had one or two videos pop off for me. So this Ikea one that I did got pretty much 1600 views, um, but that has built up over time. That's after 252 days. When it began, it was like 250. So it's slowly built up over time, sure, but it took a lot longer. But with the van life stuff, that stuff built up very, very quickly for me. I also found as well that talking about YouTube also seemed to help my channel. So I did a video called YouTube Changed My Life with only 750 subscribers at the time. I posted that September 5th, 2023, and that got me 
eight views. So, you know, it's done pretty well for my channel's standards. When I was talking interior design, I think I was a little bit too broad with my topics. So one thing that I would recommend to you guys is when you do have something, be specific. So interior design is almost like an umbrella term. You need to kind of go, okay, interior design minimalism or interior de design maximalism and just focus in that one specific section, get people to know you and also like your content and then you can expand out from there. That is obviously a thing that I've really struggled with. I'm kind of all over the place. I don't like doing the same thing all the time. So sometimes I'll do just like a completely random and different video or a video that is quite obviously more for myself than anyone else. And obviously those don't perform as well because you guys are here for van life or you're here for the interior design content. So from December 25th to March 23rd, these are the videos that have been growing my channel recently. So I've got the cheap ways to do van life. Van life is glorifying homelessness. What's in my design portfolio and the true cost of budget van life have been my main ones. One of the reasons as to why my design trends one blew up in comparison to some of my other ones is because it did get promoted at the same time as another video that came out about the same time from like, yeah, you can see it. I look how big of a peak that is. So, uh, new Ikea top 10 hot list. Um, oh, I've forgotten what her name is. I can't remember her name. She was, she's really funny though. I like her as a person. But yeah, that got 7,000 impressions and 389 views. So obviously having a video promote your video helps it get up there. Whereas a lot of my videos I found don't really seem to hit the right audience. So that's why I've got such shocking views in comparison. I don't think my production quality is all that bad, but I do think that because I don't think about my videos very specifically and I don't plan them out very well, they don't get to the right audience. So when you are doing YouTube videos, the main thing you have to do is plan and do thumbnails. So thumbnails and titles are the thing that is going to get people to click. And that was probably the one thing that I really just didn't do much research on. I didn't pay much attention to it. And now that I've actually started to think a lot more about it, my videos have done better. And it might just be because, yeah, maybe the interior design umbrella was too large. Maybe it's because van life is a trendy topic. It depends. But I have noticed that the thumbnails that I do create these days are cleaner, they're nicer. They've definitely improved in comparison, especially to three years ago. So I have made leaps and bounds in that sort of respect. But yeah, if there's one thing that I'd definitely recommend for you as a starting out YouTuber is think a lot more about your thumbnail and title. If your idea, you can't create a thumbnail and title straight away, just scrap it. It's not worth the week of editing if that's how long it takes you and sometimes it takes me that long but it's not worth it if you're not going to get the views so if you can actually plan something and go oh yeah this is a great idea for a thumbnail and you know you've told a couple of people and a couple of people are like oh yeah i can see that i'd click on that then that's a good idea otherwise it's a terrible idea just don't do it i've found that sometimes some of my videos are like you know really well planned out and you know are really informative and stuff but because my messaging isn't clear through my title and thumbnail, people don't click. Okay, before we get going, I do wanna give you guys just a couple of tips that I've kind of come to realize as I've slowly grown as a creator. Number one, make sure you enjoy it. It sounds really cliche and really silly, but I've been doing this for three years and if it wasn't for the fact that I enjoy this, I would have quit at like 100 subs. So if you do not enjoy it currently, maybe look at the niche that you're in or look at the reason as to why you don't enjoy it. If you are wanting to do this long term, you need to find a sustainable way to enjoy it. And once you've got that, even if you never blow up, it's okay. The second thing is, is that even if you don't get AdSense, you can still get paid. Now, obviously I don't get AdSense, but I've been paid for my work. I've been paid to make shorts. I've been paid to help with social media marketing. I even actually got a design client because of me posting my videos. So even though you may not necessarily get paid from YouTube specifically, you can still get money out of it, even with a teeny tiny channel like mine. So don't feel disheartened if you don't have AdSense yet, because there are alternative ways to get money. So definitely keep that in mind because 
I've been very surprised by the fact that even just me putting myself out there, people are like, oh, yeah, you're the YouTube girl. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not even monetized yet. I don't even call myself the, well, I do call myself the YouTube girl a little bit. But my third tip is get yourself a mentor. I've actually seen a lot more growth in the time that I have been doing things with my mentor than the last two years. And obviously it can be difficult to find a mentor. I found mine because of a YouTube connection. And honestly, I'm so grateful every day because my mentor has helped me so much with my editing style and just understanding how to make things quicker and how to just up level my content, even without like, you know, changing camera, changing audio or anything like that. So I would recommend getting a mentor, even if they aren't at the point that you're wanting. So like, let's say you wanted to be like PewDiePie. Obviously he's got millions and millions of subscribers. You do not need someone like that. You just need someone that knows the industry and knows how to help you. Even if they're only like a couple of subscribers ahead of you, they may know something that you just need to learn. And the fact that I have my mentor now has made an exponential difference. And I'm sure it's only going to get more and more obvious as I continue. So if you can find someone that either knows YouTube or knows how to make videos or editing or even presenting as well is a big thing. Like being able to talk to a camera is very difficult. And I honestly still feel like I'm terrible at talking to a camera. Like staring at the lens is so hard, but it's all about practice. Practice makes progress. I don't like saying perfection. I know some people will be like, oh yeah, but that's the original way to say it. You've got to make progress before you hit perfection. So that's why I like saying progress. So I definitely would recommend that. Number four, look at your analytics. I still don't understand how to completely read my analytics either, but I can see the click-through rate for certain thumbnails. I can analyze why they worked, why they don't work. I can look at the intros and go, okay, well, I babbled on for like 10 minutes there. So it makes sense why the it dropped off. In this one, I'm more precise. So that's obviously where I need to be heading. So look at your analytics, get comfy with it. Just like browse through it, get an understanding. That's going to help you out a lot. This one's going to sound super cliche as well, but enjoy the journey. If it wasn't for the fact of me enjoying the journey, I wouldn't be here still. And I really do just enjoy making YouTube videos. And even if I don't ever blow up for whatever reason, I'm still happy just making content. It is something that relaxes me, but also inspires me. And even with the comments that I do get, like they honestly like make my day. It feels like someone else out there cares about this channel. And even though it's tiny, it doesn't matter. I've got people that want to support me and that makes me really happy. And sometimes it just has to be some strangers on the internet. I know I feel like I've started to develop a community slowly here, which has been really nice because I've got frequent commenters. So I feel like I'm starting to get to know my community, which is really cool. Anyway, guys, that's all for today's video. If you'd like some inspiration now that you've seen the analytics, make sure you check out this video next and I will see you on our next adventure.